Welcome back, friends. I got a question for you. What is the most important moment of your life? You know, when I'm with a group of people, sometimes we brainstorm the answer to this question and somebody will put up their hand and say, well, the most important moment of my life is the day I was born. Other person will get a little spiritual and say, well, you know, when I was baptized, sanctifying grace in my soul, became a child of God. Somebody else will say, when I met my spouse, set my life up in a whole different direction. If you scan your life journey, there might be certain chapters that seem to rise above other ones. But the most important moment of your life, I know what it is. I don't know your name. I don't know your phone number. And I don't know your favorite flavor of ice cream, but I hope it's chocolate. But the most important moment of your life, I know what it is. And the reason is because the most important moment of your life is the same that is most important in mine. And that moment is right now. Why? Well, it's simple. It's the only moment your life has. Life is only lived one moment at a time. In fact, the present moment right now is all we got. Life is sort of an uh, illusion. We think it's more than one, one moment, but it's actually not. You, you can only live one moment at a time. Have you ever tried to live two? <laughs> it doesn't work. So this is very important to understand because once we realize the most important moment of our life is the present moment, and it's all we got, in fact, it's our most surest possession, then we realize, ah, if that's all we got, this is where we meet God. God comes to us only in the present moment. Some people call the present moment the sacrament of the moment. What do the sacraments do? They're an outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. Well, the sacrament of the moment with a little s is the moment given to us by God by which he comes to us. In other words, this moment that we find ourselves in is not insufficient in grace to grow in the purpose of our life, to know, love, serve God. But most people miss the grace of the present moment. Why? Because they're trying to live two other moments. And one is over there. What's over there? That's the past. And how do people live in the past? Two different ways. Number one, by reliving the good old days, longing for life to go back to the way it used to be. And so they're trying to recreate the past in the present because the past was just so good. Now, should we celebrate the past and all the blessings that God has done? Absolutely. But we shouldn't try to recreate it because yesterday's blessing is not a good, good enough for today. For today, God desires to do something new. But other people live in the past, not by reliving the good old days. They're reliving, number two, the bad old days. Anger and resentment. Cage a person in, robbing them of the grace of the present moment. I do a whole series of talks on this, but here's the key point. When you forgive, you set a prisoner free and you realize that prisoner was yourself. Healing is found in the present moment, not in the past. But other people rob themselves of the grace of the present moment, not because they're living back there, but because they're living over there. And what's over there? The future. And how do we live in the future? Fear, worry, anxiety rob us of the grace of the present moment because we propel our minds to something that has yet to happen. And don't we bring it to worst case scenario? I call it stinking thinking or catastrophic thinking. I believe it was Mark Twain that said, I have lived through many tragedies in life, most of which have never happened. Can you relate? <laughs> Another way that we do it is like this. Have you ever seen this cartoon with a horse running and there's a stick that's over top its head and dangling from the end of the stick on a string is a carrot. And no matter how hard that horse runs, it can't quite catch that carrot because that carrot's always two inches in front of its nose. It's diabolical. <laughs> how is that in our life? It goes like this. My life will begin when the kids move out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> my life will begin when I get out of debt. My life will begin when I get that promotion. My life will begin when I figure out what's wrong with my body and the aches and pains or that disease I'm struggling with. 
My life will begin when that relationship that's strained in my life is restored. No. My life begins now. Life is now. But if we're living our life like that, we're going to rob ourselves of God and the grace that he wants to pour into our life right now. So once we recognize the present moment as the most important moment of our life, how are we to respond? How are we to live this? How are we to open our hearts to the grace that God wants to pour into our life? I'd like to suggest five words, five words to remember. And if we live these five words, we will be living the present moment and opening our hearts to the grace that God wants to pour into our life. Five words. Here we go. Do the next loving thing. Do the next loving thing. That's all we have to do in the spiritual life is do the next loving thing. You know, I think it's simple. Again, just not easy. Kind of like golf. Get the ball in the hole. <laughs> simple just not easy. But a child should be able to understand the basics of the spiritual life. So if we want to live for God, we want to live the sacrament of the moment, we just have to stop and ask ourselves the question, what is the next loving thing to do? And then you do it with love. Another good question to ask is this, what are my responsibilities in my current state of life? And then do the next loving thing two very important points. The responsibilities of a student is different than somebody who is working. The responsibilities of a married person is different than somebody who is single or, or widowed. But our responsibilities are so important. It's the primary way that God shapes us into the person he's created us to be other than the sacraments. And we have to be faithful to the moments that are in front of us. Otherwise, we miss out on God's grace. A great example of somebody who lived their life this way is Saint Therese of Lisieux. She was a cloistered Carmelite nun. Translation, she didn't get out much. <laughs> and she believed that if she just bent down and picked up a pin out of love, in other words, do the next loving thing, she could convert a soul simply by the by being responsible in her current state of life and doing it with love so question do you got pins at home <laughs> i'll tell you what my pins are dirty diapers um, sweeping the floor taking out the trash picking up toys um, coloring with my kids sometimes Another example of somebody who lived this out in a beautiful way is Mother Teresa. Before Mother Teresa was known around the world, what was she? Well, she was a sister with the Loretto sisters in India, Calcutta. And what did she do? She taught school. And then she was a principal. Now, when she was fulfilling her responsibilities as a school teacher and principal, did she say, oh, I hate my job. I wish I wasn't here. No, she was faithful to her current responsibilities and did the next loving thing. And because she was faithful, it led her to hearing the call within the call that led her out into the streets. And then when she left that convent, she started her order. She has pennies in her pockets and the slums before her. How does she start? She says, with the first person in front of me. Mother Teresa was faithful to her current circumstance, and then did the next loving thing. You can do that. You don't have to fly anywhere in the world to find Jesus. Jesus is right in your current circumstance, in your present moment, and you encounter him when you do the next loving thing. So friends, two things I'd like you to consider in closing. Number one, what are your current responsibilities in your life? And do you see those responsibilities as ordained by God to help you grow in union with him? And number two, are you fulfilling those responsibilities with love? And when we see these two things, we realize there's no circumstance in life and no moment in life that is boring for each circumstance and each moment has an eternal meaning that can impact eternity. Friends, thanks for watching.